Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name is Velele Nkosi. In this video, I will be working on a previous question paper. So the paper was written in June 2022. So it's for supplementary. It's from the Department of Basic Education 2022 and Life Sciences Paper 1. So today I'll be working on a human brain. So uh, if you want to answer the questions before you see the solutions then you can pause the video here then try to answer these questions so this will help you to see how far are you with life sciences so without wasting more time let's get to it so here i have the diagram this is the diagram for the questions before i answer the questions that we ask let me give the labels so yeah 2.1 say the diagram below shows part of the human brain so this is the human brain then uh, to give the labels let me get my pen and uh, number a so the label number a it's a cerebellum so cerebellum is this part that is at the back and it is below the Cerebrum. So cerebellum is the second largest part of the brain. So number A, it's cerebellum. And then number B, number B, it's medulla oblongata. So that is where the spinal cord is joining the brain. So number B, it's medulla oblongata. And then number C is this small part here. So this small part, it's a gland, it's a pituitary gland. You remember in human reproduction, we talked about the pituitary gland and its functions. So number C, it's pituitary gland. Well, number D is the largest part of the brain. So it's called the cerebrum. So cerebrum. So number D, it's a cerebrum. So these are the labels that are needed in this diagram. So let's get to the questions. Question number one, uh, 2.1.1, .1, say identify part A. So have to find part A. So part A, it's cerebellum. So part A, it's cerebellum. And then next question. Next question say state two functions of part D. So we have to see what part D. Part D is cerebrum. So we have to state two functions of the cerebrum. So cerebrum is responsible for our thinking. So when we think, we use a cerebellum. And then another function of the cerebellum it interprets all the senses in our body. So all the senses are interpreted by the cerebrum. And then another function, cerebrum, it controls all voluntarily action. Like if we want to walk, if we walk, so we use cerebrum, all the, invol all the voluntary actions. So like if I speak like this, then cerebrum is responsible. So we have to give only two. So 2.1.2 2 is for higher thought process. By higher thought process is the one that is responsible for our thinking. So when we think, taking some decisions, we use cerebrum. And then another thing, it interprets all the senses in our body. So interpretations of all senses. And then another function, it controls all voluntary actions. So these are the functions. So then now let's get to the next question. The next question say, name 
the hormone secreted by the gland C. So the gland C is pituitary gland that has effect on a long bone. So the hormones that is, has an effect on a long bones that is secreted by the pituitary gland, it's a growth hormone. So 2.1.3. Number A, it's a growth hormone. And then number B, the name of the hormone, the former married gland in the breast. So the hormone that is secreted by the pituitary gland that is responsible for mammary gland in the breast is called prolactin hormone. So it's a prolactin. So it's the one that is responsible for producing milk after a female or a woman has given birth. So these are the answers for question number 2.1.3 and then question number 2.1.4 it's next so question number 2.1.4 say state one way in which brain is protected so we have to state one way in which a brain is protected so we know that a brain is protected by the three meninges so we can say meninges because if you see here it's only one mark or we can say cranium cranium it's a head bone the the bones that make up the head we call it a cranium including the skull all the four bones all the bones that are in on our head we call them cranium so it's protected by the meninges or you can say it protected by the cranium bone or cranium a cranium is the head is the bone that makes up our head and then the next question say describe the role of hypothalamus in a thermoregulation so thermoregulation is the process of regulating the body temperature so we have to explain the effect or the role of a hypothalamus so we know that when the temperature it's not normal or it's abnormal the sensors detect this level of the temperature which is hypothalamus and then the hypothalamus will send impulse to the sweat gland and to the blood vessels so that they can stop this sweating so uh, the process goes like this the hypothalamus receive impulse so 2.1 2.1.5 so the role of the hypothalamus it will receive the impulse about the change in temperature then after it respond by sending impulse to the blood vessel of the skin and then to the sweat gland so the sweat gland are the effectors so they, they will respond according to the temperature level so first of all you will see hypothalamus it receive impulse And then after receiving impulse and then it responded by sending impulse to the blood vessel of the skin and then again it sent impulse to the sweat gland so this is the role of the hypothalamus so it received the impulse and then after it responds by sending impulse to the blood vessel of the skin and then it also it sent impulse to the sweat gland so depending on whatever the changes that needed to be done so that is where the blood vessels and the sweat gland they will respond according to what is needed so this is the role of the hypothalamus and then the next question say question number 2.1.6 Part B is involved in the homeostasis control of the carbon dioxide in the blood. So part B, it's a medulla oblongata. And then the question say, state the location of the receptors that are stimulated by the increase in carbon dioxide concentration in the blood. So if the level of carbon dioxide is increased in the blood, so we, have, we, we must give 
the location of the receptors. So the receptors are in the carotid artery. So the carotid artery are these blood vessels that supply our brain with oxygenated blood. So that is where we find the receptors that are responsible to, for detecting the carbon dioxide. So the receptors are called chemoreceptors. So the location is carotid artery. So carotid artery. Name two effectors that part B sent in pulse to. So the effectors that the, the metal oblongata will send in pulse to if we have to reduce the level of carbon dioxide it's the heart so the heart needs to pump so here it's number b here it's a so we'll send impulse to the heart to pump fast so that more blood can run through our body and then more carbon dioxide will leave and then another thing it's a breathing muscle so the breathing muscle they must contract more so another part it's a breathing muscle breathing muscle we're talking about the diaphragm and the rib muscle so it's a breathing muscles so these are this is the last question and then so if you want to see the memo so here is the memorandum uh, here are the questions and then the memorandum is this one then you can post the video now so you can see the question and the memo. So if you have watched this video to this far, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you are studying, good luck with your studies. Thank you very much for watching. God bless you.